I'm Larry Walther, and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 4. In this module, we will consider reversing entries. Now, reversing entries are optional. They simply reflect an undoing of previous adjusting entries, and they're intended to simplify the record-keeping process. They're really only appropriate for those adjusting entries that were recorded at the end of a previous period that involve future cash flows. Those would generally be accrued revenue and accrued expense items. By way of example, assume we have a payroll scenario so that, the, that at the end of the first year, which I'm calling 20X3 here, an adjusting entry was made to record $2,000 of accrued expenses for salaries. So we owed our employees at the end of 20X3, we owed them $2,000 for work already rendered. Clearly we need to record the expense via an adjusting entry. The next payday is not until January 15th of the next year, 20X4, at which time $5,000 is going to be paid to employees that $5,000 relates in time, $3,000 to 20X4, earned during 20X4, and $2,000, which was earned in the previous year, 20X3. So if we look at the journal entries for this transaction without reversing entries, what we'll have is the initial recording of salary expense and a related salary payable at the end of the first year, a standard adjusting entry. And then on January 15th, when we record the salary payment, we'll record $3,000 of expense and then the other $2,000 is going to be to pay the payable that was previously accrued. The total $5,000 payment becomes $3,000 of expense and $2,000 to satisfy the previously recorded salary payable. If we look at this same example now with reversing entries, the entry on December 31 is the same. That is, we debit salary expense and credit salary payable. But we simply reverse that entry, exactly undo it on the first day of the new year. So we're going to debit salary payable and credit salary expense. Now, if you're thinking salary expense has been zeroed out, that's not true because recall that at the end of a year, our revenue and expense accounts are closed out. Our temporary accounts are closed out. So we zeroed out salary expense in our closing process at the end of X3, which means this reversing entry that we record on the first day of the new year sets the salary expense into an abnormal credit balance or a negative balance of $2,000. At the end of this transaction period, when we pay the employees credit cash $5,000, now we can make a normal entry to debit salary expense. We no longer have to concern ourselves with the fact that there was a previous accrual. Notice that the debit to salary expense of $5,000 along with the previous credit to salary expense of $2,000 produces the correct amount of expense for the period $3,000. It makes it very easy on the actual payment date, in this case January 15th, it makes it very easy to simply credit cash and debit the expense. We don't have to be concerned about the effect of previous accruals when we're using this reversing entry process. Notice the salary payable account is wiped out. We uh, credited it $2,000 in the first year. We debited it $2,000 in the next year. So all of the account balances are correct. In this next slide, we have a comparison. On the left-hand side, is an example of the entries we looked at without reversing entries and on the right hand side is an example of those same entries this time with the reversing entries. If you look at these entries and compare them, I've drawn arrows to show that in the final analysis all of the accounts are treated in an identical fashion. We look at the green for salaries payable. In both cases we had debits to salary payable for $2,000 beginning of the new year. Over the life cycle of the transaction all the accounts are exactly the same. So there's no difference in the accounting outcomes with, with reversing entries or without, reversing entries are simply a, a tool to facilitate the accounting process.